Well, hello, friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here. Welcome down to the Whiskey Nook, and welcome to another Sample Sunday. I think I missed last Sunday. Things were just too chaotic, but uh, today we're only going to look at one sample out of respect to uh, what I imagine is rarity. Uh, this was given to me by Ray from BC, and it's a 1965 bottling of Park Lane by Corby. I'll tell you more when we get back from the break. Uh, I don't think a bottle hold will really do it justice, so maybe I'll put a virtual bottle here. Uh, when we come back, a sample uh, from uh, Park Lane, Corby, 12-year-old. Three, four. Really not sure I put all those words or titles together right uh, just before the break, but um, this is from the Corby Distillery. I did a little bit of reading that I could find. In 1965, uh, I believe it was centered in Ontario. Uh, between uh, Kingston and Toronto is at Bellevue. Um, I, I believe that's where it was centered. Of course, then, uh, you know, I believe that uh, distillery evolved J.P. Weiser, Hiram Walker, like I believe it all kind of came together into that very large conglomerate now that Hiram Walker distills for many, many groups. Uh, it's a Canadian whiskey, bottled at 40%, has a 12 year age stamp on it and uh, 40%. Now what I wasn't able to find out is really any details in terms of the grain in here. And if you're a Canadian historian of whiskey, Please comment below. Let me know what I'm about to taste, uh, smell, taste, kind of walk you through. But even if I don't know that much about it, a little bit about the history, thanks to Ray for the sample. I really haven't had a lot of Dusties, a lot of whiskey from uh, you know the 60s, so it's a real treat for me. Let's go on the nose. I will say the color, very dark, very, you know, that, that um, deep copper, which suggests it could be colored at only 12 years. This nose, very strong caramel, corn sweetness. Very gentle cinnamon maybe, uh, but the caramel is so, so strong. It's that, you know, the toffee, that, that Macintosh crack toffee caramel type. No, it's a little darker. So maybe more like um, those unwrapped caramels that you, uh, you do if you're gonna dip an apple or, yeah. Tons of that. So much. I actually poured it oh, probably by now a good 20 minutes ago as I was just getting ready. And the room has really taken on that type of smell. Yeah, there we're in a we're in a um, candy factory kind of thing, right? Where there's just so much of that high sugar uh, toffee caramel. All right. Let's see what it tastes like. Hope you have a little Canadian and pour along. Cheers. I think mentally my fear is an old bottle will have lost anything, that kind of thing. Very expressive. Delicious. Um, yes, we're still playing in top of caramel. Clearly, a lot of corn in here, but it was bright. It was a juicy red apple, and there's a little bit of that cinnamon kicking around. I don't really think it's rye. It's got to be from oak. Could be rye, but it you know it really it, it really uh, drinks you know smooth up front. Oh, okay, but there's a little bit of a hug, and for forty percent to have a hug. Maybe there is some rye in there. You know, I don't mention it much, but it clings nicely to the glass. I like whiskey that, you know, you bring it down and you, and you see that slow retreat of the oils that are in here. There is a bit of a, a hug at the end. Um, that interplays between that darker, almost burnt sugar, a little bit of oak, 
a little bit of spice on the edge. So uh, if I, I now think there is some rye in here, it's not the first, you don't, I, I didn't get it on the nose. I really even didn't get it right away on the palate, but it's got some nice hug, a little bit of cinnamon spicing in it. Um, so if it doesn't have rye, it's coming from some cask there, uh, but a really nice, very Canadian whiskey profile. Really Canadian, like it reminds me a lot of Copper Pot, Forty Creek, a lot. Um, and I know Forty Creek is not Corby or Harem Walker or J.P. Weiser. I, I, I do know that. I'm just saying from this flavor profile, it's got really a lot of that similar notes that I get. It's pretty sweet. Thankfully, um, it feels done well. I, I do think that with time, I might find this a little overly sweet. If, I, if this was a regular current expression, um, but it's rarity, it's, it's, it's age. At, I know it's only 12 years, but I mean, you know, it came out, this, this was bottled in 1965. It's going back a ways. Um, really makes it more special, but a really dark caramel cinnamon. Um, wow. Thanks, Ray. What a treat. Uh, obviously, I can't give it a star value, but I am enjoying it. Now, I wanted to compare it with something that I could still get today. And so before I poured it, I thought, what do I have? You know, that, that is, uh, in my opinion, a very well done, true to Canadian style whiskey. And that remains this bottle of 90, 20, 20 year old. And I've heard from Highwood that they have uh, new stocks and that they will be releasing it again. This is an older bottle. It, did, it was discontinued for a while, but I have confirmation from uh, Highwood directly that they do have stock now and that they uh, can intend to uh, re-release the uh, 20 year old 9020, which uh, in this expression, I did not get confirmation of the current one, uh, is 100% corn. There's no rye in here, aged uh, for 20 years in really a combination of reused barrels, but it's released at 45%. Let's see what it smells and tastes like. Oh, interesting. In this scenario, I would say they are of the same line strong strong um caramel popcorn kind of nose this uh, adds a little more burnt sugar to that kind of nose in the palate cheers similar ride the toffee is lighter this really is more the worthers less the the unwrapped kind of sugary caramels. Got a little bit of tannicness there, uh, which I haven't reported in the, in the past. Definitely darker, huskier. Hmm. Very sweet. In this sitting, it's appealing to me, which, you know, if you're a long time viewer of the channel really stands out because this is really sweet, like cooked corn syrup type sweetness. And yet it holds together. Well, the 9020, a little lighter on the nose. Oh, there's a few extra little flavors in there. I'm getting a little more oak. I am. I, I, I do like that. But there is something in the finish today that's a little bit astringent. Almost a little, maybe not astringent, a little sour. Something like that. So I'm sure it's because of its uniqueness, age, rarity. I am uh, preferring this Park Lane to the 20-year-old. So this is a 12-year-old versus a 20-year-old. Just because it sat in the bottle doesn't mean it's gotten any better. But in this sitting, I am preferring this uh, with the caveat that for a unique one-time sip or an after-dinner dessert, I would enjoy that. For a um, kind of a go-back-to whiskey, this would be far too sweet for me. And even this is less sweet than what I'm getting out of here. Ah, that was a fun sample for me anyways. I know it's, uh, you know, 
uh, unusual and Canadian, which means most of my viewers probably can't connect to that. But I hope you've appreciated just uh, spending a little bit of time. Hopefully you poured something along and, uh, and we've had a chance to connect. Hope you guys uh, have a great, we're about to do Ukrainian Christmas uh, for my family, uh, which obviously was on the 7th this year, but we waited till a weekend. My son can come home and, uh, and we're going to uh, remember the many gifts that we have uh, this year. Uh, I know it's a tough year for all of us, but I am still so thankful that uh, my immediate family has their health and we are able to support each other. I hope you also have friends or family that are, your support. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, have a great week.